Hello, my favorite mathematicians, and welcome to 1.1 Prime Factorization. Our essential question today is, how can I find the prime factorization of a number? The materials that you are going to need today are a writing utensil, your math notebook, a little bit of a growth mindset, and some determination. We have three learning goals today, not essential questions. We have three learning goals. They are, one, I can identify a prime number, two, I can identify a composite number, and three, I can find the prime factorization of a number. So I bet you can already tell we've got a lot of vocabulary today. And that's what we're going to start with because before we can find prime factorization, we got to know our vocab. So first word up today is factors. Factors are numbers that you can multiply together to get another number. What in the world does that mean? Let's look at an example and find out. So 2 and 3 are factors of 6 because I can multiply two and three together and get six. Another example, I can multiply four and five together to get 20. So that means four and five are both factors of 20. So you probably remember learning about fact families in elementary. That's all we're talking about here, okay? So next word that we need to know today is prime number. Prime numbers are those numbers, they only have two factors. There are only two whole numbers that you can multiply together to get that number. Can you think of one? What about three? The only two whole numbers that you can multiply together to get three are one and three, one in itself. Okay, so three is a prime number. Another example is five. The only two things you can multiply together to get five are one and five. So that makes it a prime number. So factors, numbers we can multiply together to get another number. When you only have two factors, that means it's a prime number, okay? Our third and final vocab before we start talking about prime factorization is composite numbers. So prime numbers only have two factors. Every other number is a composite number. They have more than two factors. So let's look at an example of a composite number. We said two and three were both factors of six. Well, six is a composite number because two times three is not the only way that we can get six. We could also do one times six to get six. There are four factors there, meaning it's a composite number because there are more than two. All right, so we know what factors are, we know what prime numbers are, we know what composite numbers are. What do all of those words have to do with prime factorization? Well, I'm glad you asked. Prime factorization is when we take a composite number, we break it down into factors that are prime numbers. Again, that's a lot of words on your screen might not make much sense to you. Let's look at an example and I think that will help clear it up for us, okay? We're gonna start with the number 10. 10 is a composite number because there are more than two factors. There are more than one way we can multiply and get 10. So we could do one times 10 or we could do two times five. So here's your first hint in prime factorization and you might wanna write this down in your notes. When we do prime factorization, we never use one and that number because we already have that number. Why would we repeat ourselves? So instead of one times 10, I'm gonna take 10 and I'm gonna break it down into two times five. Okay, so now I've got like two branches going on. Now I'm gonna look at each of those branches separately. So I'm gonna start by looking at the two and I'm gonna ask myself a question. And that question is, is two a prime number or is two a composite number? Two is a prime number. The only way to get it is one times two. And since I don't use one, I can't break two down. And so that branch is finished. So I'm gonna circle it. And then I'm gonna go ask myself the same question about five. Is five a prime number or is five a composite number? Well, we just said just a few seconds ago, five was a prime number. The only way to get it is one times five. It cannot be broken down. So again, I'm gonna circle it. All my branches are finished, they've all been circled. That means I have my prime factorization. And I'm gonna take all of those circled numbers and I'm gonna write them as a multiplication statement. So in this case, 
It's just two times five. All right, hint number two for prime factorization. When you are writing out your prime factorization, when you are writing out that multiplication statement, always put your numbers in order from least to greatest. So here we want to make sure we write two times five instead of five times two. So good hint. I would pause me and write that down if I were you. Always put them in order from least to greatest. All right, let's look at another example. Let's look at 18. So 18, again, I have multiple ways that I can break this down. I can do 1 times 18, but that's a no-no because we just said we don't use 1. I can do 2 times 9, or I can do 3 times 6. So it can definitely be broken down. Now, you can choose to do 2 times 9 or 3 times 6, and we should end up with the same answer regardless of which one you choose. I'm going to choose to go with 2 and 9, okay? Then I'm going to look at 2, and I'm asking myself that question of, is it prime or is it composite? Well, we just said 2 is prime. The only way to get it is 1 times 2. So we're going to circle that one, and that branch is done. Now I'm going to look at 9 and ask myself that same question. Is 9 prime or composite? 9 is composite because I can do 1 times 9, but I can also break it down into 3 times 3. So now I have two new branches that I have to look at. Thankfully, they're the same number. Is 3 a prime or a composite number? 3 is prime. It was our example a few minutes ago. The only way to get it is 1 times 3. So I'm going to circle those. And I have all circles. So now I get to write out my multiplication statement, my prime factorization, putting my numbers in order from least to greatest. So in this case, it is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. Now... If I check that, if I look right here, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18. It takes me back to that original number, and that's kind of how I can check myself and make sure I'm right. All right, one more example. Let's look at 16. Again, multiple ways that you can break 16 down, but it is composite. It can't be broken down. I'm going to choose to do 4 times 4. Okay, you could do 2 times 8, and we should end up with the same answer. Four, prime or composite? It is composite because I can break that down into two times two. We already know two is a prime number, so I'm going to go ahead and circle both of those. And then four, same number. We're going to do the exact same thing. Two times two, those are both prime, circling them, and we are done, ready to write that multiplication statement. In this case, it is two times two times two times two. All right, one last example before I let you try this on your own. 36, a little bit bigger number, can be broken down in a few different ways. I'm going to choose to do 4 times 9. I've just done worked with these numbers. I know how they break down. This one should be fairly simple. 4, I can break that down into 2 times 2. We know 2 is a prime number, so we're going to go ahead and circle both of those, and we're going to look at that 9. We just did one with 9. We know it can be broken down into 3 times 3. And we know 3 is a prime number because the only way to get it is 1 times 3. So everything is circled, ready to write it out with 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. All right, now it is your turn to try this out. So pause the video, try those last four problems in your notes, and then you can hit resume and check your work. All right, there are your answers for the last four problems in your notes. Hopefully, you did pretty well. If you didn't, maybe pause the video here and go back and figure out where you made a mistake and see if you can make those corrections. Remember, when you are writing your answers, that they are in the correct order from least to greatest. And that, my mathematicians, is your first lesson of the year. 1.1 Prime Factorization. And now you can answer that question, how can I find the prime factorization of a number? Before we go, I have to give credit where credit is due. All fonts and clip art in today's video were created by Amy Grosbeck Fonts, Amanda Newsom, A Perfect Blend, and Bricks and Border. So I just want to say thank you to those amazing artists for sharing their work with me. And as always, go forth and be amazing.